I think that a lot of people are very reluctant to hire attorneys because they don't want to necessarily spend the money or they don't think that, that it's money wisely spent. But in the long run, it really is. Um, you know, I, it, if you use an attorney and, and you get everything in writing at the outset, including, you know, the, the $250 covers all scuff marks, all damage to your house, uh, there's, uh, nobody can argue with that at the end of the day. If there are scuff marks on the floor, you have an agreement that says, that's it, that's all they're entitled to, and, and you're not, there won't be any more dispute about it. So, I, you know, I think that, you know, you should talk to an attorney and you should try to create a, as much of a paper trail with respect to every aspect of your movie as possible. Production counsel, exactly, and, and you know, different firms will do it, different sole practitioners will do it. Um, people will, will work with first-time filmmakers. Uh, not all lawyers charge on an hourly basis. Some people will charge a flat fee depending on the budget. Um, sometimes it, it, you can work out a, a commission arrangement. Um, but, you know, the, most lawyers who have been doing this for a while also have forms. And so it's just a matter of going in and adjusting the forms for, you know, the location agreement and the casting director agreement and, you know, the actor and actress agreements. And, and y you're, you're much better off protecting yourself at the start as opposed to just thinking that, that, you know, oh, I don't need any paperwork and then realizing how many problems there are down the road when your movie does get sold or when somebody's interested in it. you know, just with respect to every aspect of your movie, you're creating this thing called chain of title. And, you know, every finance company, every studio, everybody is going to require all of the documentation that, that shows who owns every single aspect of that movie. So, you know, you're, you're much better off protecting yourself at the beginning. When you get a contract from somebody that you don't understand, try to find an attorney. Try to find somebody with a legal background who can sit down, look at the contract with you, and explain the points that are in the contract so you really know what you're getting yourself into. Check out the people you're dealing with. Uh, we'd all like to be very supportive and we're all artists, but try to do a little bit of background. Find out what the people have done. Make sure that you get it in writing. Always do a deal memo with your crew members, always do releases, make sure you have your paperwork in order because later on getting a hold of people is very, very difficult. With your crew members, you want to decide on what their titles are going to be on the film, in their credits, where they will appear, whether it's main titles or the end crawl, and be very careful about where you place people and make sure that they understand where their placement is going to be have all your uh, copyright, you know who owns the property. If you're going to buy the property, make sure it gets transferred over and spend 10 or $15. Go to a notary together, sign off on it, have it notarized. A union tries to get their people work. A guild does not, and the guild does not get anyone work. Most filmmakers are going to have to deal with the Screen Actors Guild. You can go to their website. You can see the different contracts that are offered on that website. Make sure that you look at those contracts very, very carefully. Make sure that with each contract, you are picking the appropriate contract for your budget. Mm -hmm.